This is uh, Richard back at you. We got John's uh, 400 tranny in the house, trans brake uh, tranny. Not something that we've done before. It's all new uh, to us. And we got Peyton behind the camera today, huh, Peyton? Thumbs up. There you go. But hey, uh, I think it's going in a Chevelle, big block, nitrous car. So uh, he wants to go through it and make sure it's 100% because the car physically is 100%. So, but uh, before we go on, let's kind of look at uh, just a few things we got laying over here that we're going to be putting in it. What we've got is our Allison uh, forward and direct clutches, high, high energy clutches. Same thing that uh, in the school buses. We got our 4L80E intermediate clutches are thin, so we can get four clutches, thin steels, and then we'll set our clearance up. We have our intermediate uh, sprag. We got a complete pump, a new complete pump here, uh, but we do also have the, the 727 pump gears, which is almost a 90% uh, size for the 400 pump uh, body and gears uh, that'll fit. And then we have uh, high pressure rings a must when you run a trans brake or any type of fully manual operation and a uh, full bushing kit every bushing and of course we have our trans star complete gasket set now this will come with uh, steel sealing rings uh, but we won't be using them we buy the high pressure full ring kit that comes with every seal in it too so really nice but anyway we still got a few more things coming the band um, just uh, intermediate band, stuff like that. So, I mean, or engine brake band. So, just a few more things. But let's get this thing apart. One thing about it he didn't like, uh, anytime we cut a bell housing, I'll put an ultra bell on. Our goal is about 13 thousandths all the way around through here. I can take a feeler gauge. I mean, this bell housing will be 13 thousandths all the way around. If you look here, how bad this has been cut, jagged. Now, it doesn't have to be a machine fit to work. It can look worse as worse can be. And like this one does, see this? That looks terrible. Ours that we would have done, it looked like it almost made it to it. 13,000, like I said, is what we did on the last one. But we're going to try to clean this up and make this look a lot presentable and go from there. So. Now, this is a big shaft coming out the back, big bushing, big seal. They do make a big shaft, small bushing, small uh, seal too. So we always throw them away because the bushings are not in the kits and it's a good upgrade to just go ahead and go to the bigger yoke, bigger U-joint, stuff like that. So but you do have an O-ring right here that keeps your yoke from uh, uh, leaking out the little weep hole. Uh, so th you notice this is a bolt on style has threads back here with the, the yoke will bolt on. But they do make a yoke uh, that'll slide back and forth on here and still seal, use this seal right here for sealing the weep on the back of the yoke. Now this seal, of course, it's, it just broke, so it's old, old. You can see here this seal, it's not even rubber no more. And that should stretch like a rubber band. So, of course, we have a gasket here. A lot of times we don't even use the gasket here because uh, we can put some good sealing on here and, and it'll never leak again. These gaskets do tend to leak, so it's just another thing that uh, uh, you know for a fact you won't have a comeback. Same way with this uh, <coughs> governor cover right here. The governor's not going to be in there anymore since it's a trans brake transmission. <coughs> but we never use the paper gasket. We never use that gasket. We always throw the gasket away and we use a high temp silicone right through here sealing, put it back on and we never have an issue. This gasket right here is very prone for leaking. So even when it uh, had a governor in it and the physical governor was spinning in here, you can see where it goes here. Then there's a gear on the output shaft that turns it. So Now your trans brake <coughs> solenoid right here, this is where your modulator would have went. This seal here is hard as a, I don't tell you, should have used my screwdriver. It's not even round no more, just flat. So you definitely need to put a new O-ring on there. Now the valve in here can be spring loaded or it can just be normal. It won't have no spring. I'll kind of move it. Okay, it's spring loaded. Let's 
see if I can get my magnet in there to pull it out. I have to pick it out from the other side. Let me go ahead and kind of turn and take the bell housing and off real quick and get it out of our way. Now this is an eight bolt style bell housing and pump assembly. You got your bolts that hold it all to the front of the housing here and then you have O-rings here on the end of your bolts. Even though we have O-rings here, we still put a little bit of sealant on here no matter what. It just guarantees that we're not going to have a leak right here. Because on the bottom right here is where all the pressure goes through the pump, through the valve binding stuff, and you notice there's fluid on these. So that's why we always double seal uh, those bolts right there. Because it's always going to have pressure right down through here. Especially, especially when you have a trans brake uh, unit and it's maxed out at 220 pounds, 240 or whatever. So I'm going to kind of hold it. That's pretty red, huh? Like I said, the owner physically knows nothing about this uh, transmission. You have your trans brake solenoid here. You put power to it, it sucks it in. You let it off, it comes back out. That's why they have a spring behind the valve. That way it helps get that solenoid off and it uh, causes a quicker release. <coughs> trans brake. Probably helps with bumping in and all that type of stuff on a turbo car. A little bit longer bolts over here where the shifter goes. Bless you. Always two different bolts here all the time when we pull the pan off. So. Got a washer on all the bolts. I say we didn't pull this out, we're not putting it in. Uh, just a good friend of mine uh, that we're helping out. All the bolts out. Yep. If I can just get in here a little bit. There we go. You know, is that excessive? Uh, could be. You know, if the tranny. Uh, has been ran, ran, ran uh, forever? No. I was just a weekend? Yeah. But you can tell the pan gasket's pretty old too, so I'm assuming the pan probably hasn't been off in a long, long time. So it's going to be hard to say what we find. <coughs> Hopefully we have a screen filter here. Anytime you do a trans brake application, fully manual type thing, you, you have to have a screen. Well, of course we don't. This is just a cloth style filter and that is physically a no-no. This filter here won't flow enough fluid to supply the pump uh, and the whole unit uh, when, they're, when they have a trans brake application in them. You have to run a screen. The screen doesn't filter as good, but it moves a lot more fluid through the filter and that's what this training needs. So if you restrict the filter, you restrict the pump, you restrict the function of the tranny, you, you just burn the tranny up in itself. So. You could have caused this problem yourself just putting this on there, whoever done it, because we never run a felt filter on a trans, trans brake application. So they do filter better, but now if you're, I wouldn't even do it even if you put a new filter every weekend, because you could physically still be starving the unit. <coughs> you notice here on our detent spring, we have a double detent that holds it in park, which just makes it harder to move the shifter. Uh, you can make these, cut the end off of one, an old one, stick it on there, and now you have a double. Basically the same thing. Four-wheel drives and stuff we uh, do for the river guys and stuff, that's what we do. We make our own. But they do sell a kit that you can do it real easy yourself. We have all of our half inch bolts here, our half inch socket, excuse me. And then we have our 7 16 socket here. <coughs> a 
What we do here is we want to definitely, we don't want to tear the gaskets on these. If not, i got to track down the company, find new gaskets and all that type of stuff because a lot of these gaskets uh, don't come off easy and some come off just like that beautiful. So definitely uh, can be reusing that gasket there. Same way with the valve body gasket. They do, they could have an upper and a lower. You know, you just want to look at them. So, looks really nice. So just remember uh, which ones they go to. You can let them check them, definitely, because you don't want to get them mixed up if there's a difference between top and bottom or case and valve body. I mean, you can see just a lot of work they do here. They do a lot of channeling stuff, put this weird screw through here, channeling here. I mean, look at this, a plug here, all this uh, channel work through here. Really neat on how they take these valve bodies and, and make them work. So really, really neat. Of course, you look in here, we have zero check balls, not even in the trough. None at all. Now, on our valve right here, this is where your modulator valve would be normally. This is your trans brake valve, because they kind of look the same. Come on out of there. There you go. Okay. And there's that spring I was telling you about that helps that valve uh, push back and release that trans brake. But if you notice right here, if you go get, if we have to recase this right here, this channel right here would be uh, really shallow right through here. You have to come in here and cut this down right through here. You can see how they did it. So you want to be careful and not nick any of this through here. So you just cut that out a little bit right there. Pretty simple. Say no check balls. I could have tested that, but Peyton might have got mad at me for squirting over the fluid today. Yes. It's uh, 10 till 4, and we'll be going home eating pretty soon. But you can see we got a little bit of trash through here. Not really a whole lot. Looks pretty good. You always want to replace this gasket here because once it's crushed once, it, you're going to see, if you air check it, there's going to be a ton of air leaking all around here because there's not much of a seal. So these are really only good for about one time. If not, you'll start seeing leakage around through here. If it leaks air, it's going to leak fluid. Now, anytime you have a trans brake application to you, on your accumulator here, you're going to be leaving your two rings off. Shift uh, your trans brake will come with a spring here probably. Some of them come with a spacer. I mean, different variations for different companies. You have a square cut seal here out on the outer edge. You want to check this for any wobbling or anything like that. Truthfully, you could take this spring right here and stack this up and get your band clearance right and not have no cushion here at all. So you got to push down there. There's not much anyway. It's, it's you know, so it really don't matter. And they didn't put nothing in here. Don't I don't see it. So okay, we got our parking linkage and stuff here. Turn the shaft and you kind of... And you notice here, no speedometer. Got a freeze plug put there and we got a freeze plug put in here where the passenger linkage wire would have come through. And we have our 12 millimeter bolt right here. These sockets are always kind of tight to get in. So hole right there so anytime you pull the bolt out put one in always flat file right here because you're going to lift this edge you can see how I did it right there and that's just from the socket so once you put the bolt in flat file it back down that way you don't have no issues your little nail right here uh, this thing will fall out when you put the case upside down in the parts washer all it does is hold the shaft in and this is the same nail that uh, if you buy a governor gear rebuild kit, those nails are in there. Other than that, I guess you can go to the hardware store and find you something. Uh, 
I'm really, I think this motor makes about a thousand horsepower uh, that he's putting in this car and putting this tranny in. So he, he buys and sells cars like crazy. So, okay. It looks like here, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> like I was telling the owner that anytime we get into a unit, we're going to find stuff that, that doesn't match. It's all messed up because a lot of guys out there think they're, they're builders. A lot of stuff that they do, it works sometimes, but is it right? No. <coughs> excuse me. If I put a pressure gauge on this tranny, I'm probably going to be terrified. If you notice, it has a, washer, a moon washer here, it looks like, a moon washer here, then, then the other washer here. This is, looks like a factory spring, a stock spring that they've just shimmed up, shimmed up, shimmed up. So physically, you don't know how much pressure this tranny's got when you start it up. So it'd scare us to death if, if we did this and we put a pressure gauge on this thing with a good pump, all good seals, and we, put it, and we fired it up, it would, it would be terrifying. Uh, the, the, that spring does not match his trans brake. Okay, on the ceiling rings right here, what these rings here are, these look like 4L80E uh, rings. You can get the 4L80E overhaul kit comes with uh, two sets of rings. It comes with a hard, hard plastic style hook ring. And then they come with these uh, rings right here that you have to size. Okay, these do work pretty good uh, for high pressure. They're definitely a lot better than the factory steel or the stainless. So, but we're still, we are going to go with the high pressure orange rings, the split rings that we always use. That way, they, that way uh, that we know that they blow out and seal. If this uh, ring ever gets worn enough, it can start leaking around the outer edge. I mean, all that type of stuff. It, it cannot physically blow out and, and seal. So you get worn bushings or anything like that. Okay, you want to get in here and look for anywhere, definitely between here and here. Looks really nice here. Scotch brought that up. Now, we do not have a converter feed orifice right here. We've got to put one in here. That way we do not shove uh, the converter uh, forward hard enough to uh, push the main uh, thrust bearing out of the motor. So we're definitely going to be shrinking, putting a, we'll tap this, uh, we'll put a plug in there with 120,000, 125,000 on it, and um, this should be good to go. Now on our boost valve right here, we always want to put a steel one in. We never want to use an aluminum one uh, because the aluminum ones just don't hold the pressure. They wear really bad, okay? Okay. So... We do have a steel boost valve. That's good. Pressure regulator valve is steel. Got a little bit of wear on it. We can put a new one there. But here we go. When I was talking about spacing up uh, springs, we got two moons, and then we got the factory washer, and then we have the spring. Okay. When we do a trans brake uh, transmission, they want you to remove. The original U-shaped uh, uh, bracket there, and take that off, throw that away, put that back on, put that on like that. When it's a shift kit application, they want you to get rid of the moon-looking washers or U-shaped washers. Okay, and you're going to put it back in just like that. But the spring's going to be a totally different color. It won't be this factory blue because they they come out with this color. This is just a cheapo spring that somebody's trying to. Beef, beef the pressure up and make it work okay now also the uh, stator bushing right here on the end if you have a good converter that's self-centering we leave this bushing out I'm gonna check he brought a new transmission specialties torque converter what did they do with them two converters that was over there they move they them huh I don't know. okay but anyway we had two converters over there uh, one was mine from my car and one was the transmission specialties. But I'm going to check and make sure it's self-centering. If it is, we'll be taking this bushing out and leaving it out. And then we'll be replacing this bushing here. Okay. Now we did get a new pump body with gears just in case the body is no good. 
These are bad about shoving these gears sideways, getting a lot of play this way. Let's see what this looks like. I mean, you can see it looks really nice through here. Starts fading in right here. You see how it's black, dark here, and then here comes the shiny. And now all the coating's gone, now we're down metal to metal. You, there's a lip right there, see that lip? Where this gear has been shoved that direction. So we definitely need to put a new uh, pump body and gears in it. The stator will survive, so that's a plus. Okay, we have our forward drum here with the input shaft on it. Let's see what we got in here. Okay, now why, why somebody would do this, I don't have a clue. You notice there's only four clutches in, in your forward clutch that moves the, the vehicle forward, and they put a wave. If you, the forward drum takes thin steels. You notice it has all thick steels in here, and there's not enough room to put a clutch in between the wave. Because a 400, the clutch goes against the wave like that, and you finish out with a clutch that goes against the plate. See, but you don't have enough room uh, to put five clutches in here if you use all thick steels. So you have to put uh, thin steels in your forward drum to get them in there. But trans brake application, 4,500 stall converter, 1,000 horsepower, that wave's going away anyway. Then we're going to stack it back up. We might use all uh, thin steels but one thick steel to get our clearance right, but we've still got five clutches in there. Okay, this hub right here, if it goes thud thud, it's junk. It's junk. The, the, when it, when I got a Sonex one over there I should have set out. I mean, when you tap on it, ding, 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 really nice. Plus, it's got a roller bearing on it that we can uh, space the hub around a little bit. So, I, let me go grab that really quick because the Sonex hub on these are really the only way to go. In uh, our 400s, our 480Es, stuff like that. I'm gonna grab this really quick and show you guys. This is our Sonex uh, billet forward hub here. Comes with a bearing on the top. Then you can uh, put your washer down here, but you hear that? Night and day difference. This spline will strip right here. This spline's what moves it forward because it splines into the forward clutches. Okay, goes to the intermediate shaft. Okay, so if that strips out, you're done. So you never want to put that in there, especially in a real, real high horsepower application. Okay, guys? And then we're going to get down in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and bend my nail real quick. I forgot to say that. I just take and bend that up a little bit. That way, when I stand it up in the parts washer, the nail doesn't fall out. I just want to show you that real quick. Okay, hopefully we got a nice brag assembly here. It's got the wrap style uh, lock washer or ring right here. What I do is I put the little opening right there in there. That way this will go in it. Then I can turn it to that there and then this light here will lock in there. Because you, you got to have it lined up here to make it lock and then you can take and turn it. That way the lock is away from the opening right here. Okay. This piece here, you always want to check these tabs are bad about stripping where this thing just spins. You can see here what the tabs look like, they're no good. Now also, a 480E and a 400, the outer race right here, the 480E four clutch is, is wider. Uh, the uh, 400 three clutch is thinner, so if you try to use it, when we put four clutches down in here for the intermediate uh, clutch pack, then we could have a clutch hanging off the edge. Okay, so you always want to make sure you use a wide outer race. Okay, and then you want to look at this drum and see what shape it's in. I can tell you, I got to get on the phone and get some pieces coming because I think we're really in trouble on this drum here. But you can see this this uh, drum right here, this race right here, is just chattered all to death. You see all them chatter marks. I mean, you can fill them with a screwdriver. That's that sprag jumping, trying to lock. And it just finally just beats itself to death. 
Anytime you make a 400 shift harder into second gear, this bearing's gonna lock harder because there's no cushion no more. There's no wave uh, in the second gear clutch pack no anymore. So you're gonna get a really violent second gear shift and that's what breaks this and what explodes your factory uh, roller clutch assembly. So that's why you always gotta upgrade to this, but you still get wear here. See how bad that's worn. So the drum's basically no good. Uh, and also, I wanted to note this too. Uh, on these forward clutches, that's just a factory clutch. That's really not an Eagle red line or nothing. I don't know what it is. There's no name on it, so I wouldn't even put that clutch in a trans brake application. Now, let's see what we got here. Okay. Anytime you do a trans brake application, they want you to drill a bleed orifice for a constant bleed. Uh, the, the ceiling rings on this stator right here, they always have cross leaks and stuff like that. So they got to allow for spring pressure and bleed off oil to keep this clutch off when it's not supposed to be on when you got this tranny max out at 220 pounds, 240 PSI. So they worry about cross leaks. So basically that's why we have that little bleed orifice there. That's really in a little bit different spot than I'm used to. So, oh, but here's the problem. Anytime you build this drum right here, you can only use one check ball. One check ball. You cannot have a check ball in your piston, and you cannot have a check ball in your drum, and you cannot have a bleed orifice. You can't have all these big old leaks like that. Now you can have one check ball, bleed orifice, a piston with no check ball, that's how it works. Or you have a drum with no check ball, a piston with a check ball, and your bleed orifice. But you can't have both. So we're going to see that our high gear clutch right here is probably cooked. And that's probably why. Uh, because it just couldn't uh, build enough pressure, holding good clamping pressure, because we had so much bleed on it. You know, the, the check, bars, check balls are going to seal eventually, but at... 8,000 RPMs, you know, you got that thing's got to seal instantly. There can't be no millisecond uh, for that ball to seal. It's got to seal like right now. So, but you can see here, I mean, it's uh, five clutches. They look like they were a choline steels or something. But we'll uh, clean this up, put some really nice Allison steels in there, or clutches, excuse me. You can see we do have one metal steel kind of mixed in there for a trying to see if they had to see they have a lot of thin steels here they could have used in their forward drum see so setting up clearances on these are really critical no waves at all though in this so throw the drum away find your piston with a uh, no check ball or a drum with no check ball with the, with the right style race so uh, this, these bushings here guys are bad about wearing uh, they make two versions of the 4L80E early, the 4L80E late, and the 400. The 400 takes this style, 4L80E early takes this style, 4L80E late takes the groove style. Do not get them mixed up. Okay. Taking wave plates out of second gear is a big iffy deal. Depending on the power that they make and how firm you want this tranny to shift, okay? Um, a 400 tranny has a very big clutch and uh, you can drill the feed holes really large and you can really put it in second gear. Blow the sprags out of it and all kinds of stuff. So uh, leaving a wave out is, like I said, it's really tricky. If I could put a 4L80E center support in here and use the little thin wave that they use, I like that. But physically putting a, a wave against a clutch like a, a 400 has, I'm not into that at all. I'd rather do all steels and then use the 400 thin wave that goes down in there. It has a little locking teeth that sets in there. That wave there collapses a lot better but still gives you a little bit of cushion to, to keep it from just, just killing the sprags and the tranny. But you can see here, just a three clutch. So we definitely got to get a four clutch in this unit. Make that really nice.
This is a, a bevel washer right here. It's bevel on the outer edge and flat on the inside. And the bevel does go out. Got to just kind of walk it. I don't like my opening to go in here. I don't want my opening of my snap ring here. I want my opening of my snap ring over here. Okay. Bevel up, flat in. Pretty simple. Now you notice here, we do have the high pressure rings here. And we leave our inner, the second one down off uh, for our, our third gear clutch apply. Okay. Now on this drum here too, we're going to be leaving, uh, oh my tools back there. Uh, we're going to leave all the piston, uh, the seals on the pistons, but we're going to leave the center one out of the drum. When you do that, that's, that's the exact same thing as leaving this O-ring off, or this seal right here off. Okay. If you left it on, and left this off, you're doing the same thing, but we like to leave them both off. Okay, but make sure it's the second one down. Okay, you can kind of see here what looks like the drum's been rubbing even a little bit here. So you want to make sure um, you don't have wear down in here, right through here, because this drum sets up off the support, and that drum sets up on this intermediate shaft right here, right through here. Let me pull it out. It, it, it uh, physically sets right on this edge right here. So sometimes when you're sizing your bushings and stuff to get them to fit on here, they'll try to hang right here on this edge when you're putting new bushings in here. So you always want to make sure your clearance is right. It's lifting everything uh, towards your center support. Let's see here. Okay, we're going to look here. We want to make sure we have a, uh, a wide support too. Uh, if you have a thin one, it takes a snap ring down in the case right here so the, so the support will set on it. Uh, but this one looks to have a thin so there's no snap ring. But if we get case wear down in here, what we'll do, we'll go grab a snap ring, put it down in the case down there, and then we'll use a thin support. There's no b really benefit to it. Uh, it just lifts the support up a little bit, and uh, it's not got, it ain't just setting down on the bottom of the case down in there. So... This bushing right here, too, is real critical. We have a selective washer right here. The washer kit, these are selective. You can put, I see a lot of guys, uh, now they've already put a bearing here. Let me see if they spaced it. And they did put a spacer right here. Let me get it out. I don't know if I can. What they got is, I don't know if you can see it down in here. I can't grab it. It's, it's stuck to it. But you can see it looks like a 350 pump shim. Probably about 33,000, 35,000 is what I normally end up using right here when we get rid of the three tab washer and the spacer, or the four tab washer and the three tab race that sits down in there, and we update it to the roller bearing. Now, anytime we up, upgrade it to the roller bearing, we like to leave this bushing sticking up just a little bit to where this bearing that bushing centers that bearing in the case right there see not too much because you don't want it to rub down in here on your uh, output shaft area okay you don't want it rubbing down in here okay we want to look at our band band actually looks pretty legit looks really nice you can tell it's a new style smooth drum not grooved looks really good now we would have also we would have put a, a brass washer down in here because they make a four tab brass washer you can put down in here too instead of the plastic. Anytime we do a trans brake uh, application, we try to get rid of all the plastic. Okay. Then we have this little lube washer, is what I call it. It sets around your lower planet and goes inside your your upper planet. And to me, it's a seal that keeps this area full of oil, keeps these uh, planets just full of oil, okay? The metal uh, copper washer is wider than this plastic one, the brass one, so it does give you more area. Now, anytime we do these here, we also come in here and tick weld the pin on the roller. These pins are bad about sliding out this direction and start shaving the plastic washer. So we eliminate that right off the bat. Uh, 180 grit this, put a new bushing in there. Look at your sun gear. 
Now this is a, a two groove style. Uh, the early 4080E was a two groove, the later was a four groove. So you gotta uh, keep the groove, whatever's in there needs to go back in there, okay? So, are we missing anything? I think we got quite a bit. Now we are gonna clean all this up here, get that looking a lot better for him. He'll appreciate that and uh, get this thing uh, back together. I gotta get on the phone to Raymond at Transstar really quick and get a drum ordered and stuff like that. So guys, we appreciate you, Peyton, for recording definitely, and we wanna thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, we're going fishing Friday, and uh, we'll see you guys in a week after that, but I believe we do have maybe another two videos coming after this one even, so y'all stay tuned. Have a great